All right, today we have another B25 from Banana Hobbies. However, this box, well, it's about four times bigger than our last one. Let's get into it and see what's inside. All right, so here we have the Super Mitchell sold by Banana Hobbies as a Blitz RC Works plane. Uh, we've had some really good and terrible experiences under the name of Blitz RC Works. Now, it's interesting to point out that on the outside shipping uh, box, uh, we actually have a completely different name, Skyflight Hobbies Co. Uh, Limited. That is the name of the apparent manufacturer of this Blitz RC Works plane sold as Banana Hobbies. Basically, we have so many, you know, BS names and manufacturers, we really just never know what we're going to get in the box. So a typical unboxing for Banana Hobby Planes seems to be a myriad of boxes inside of boxes. Uh, now, having pulled this out of our, our shipping box, it, it's really not much smaller. However, I did see we have foam. And that's at least a good sign. Maybe that means what's inside has been shipped well, packaged well, well taken care of. It's treated as a higher quality product. However, we have absolutely no graphics on the outside of this box. And that's our other metric that we use for determining the quality at a glance. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So we got this plane on sale for $159. Uh, this is a plane I've actually looked at for a while. Looks like I'm gonna have to uh, coax the box. Um, this is a plane we've looked at for a while, uh, but it's just been so cost prohibitive, it's not worth taking the gamble on a Banana Hobbies plane. Um, wow, this thing is really switched on there, or I've missed some more tape. There we go. Okay. I'm going to just let that fall. There we go. Um... Wow, actually first impressions are not terrible. Looks like we have a double layer of foam. Um, let's go ahead and, and see if we can free these. Um, I'll show you what I'm seeing here right off the bat. We've actually got a, a pretty well packaged plane. I'm, I'm actually encouraged by this. <laughs> and for the price, well, I, I better get a little bit of packaging foam. You know what I'm saying? If you're not on par with your competitors, get out of the game. So, wow. Yeah, we've, we've immediately got wings, we've got cowls, we've got a fuselage. Let's go ahead and separate these. Keep that from falling off. Looks like we've got our pods for our engines, our nacelles. Uh, we've got uh, some sort of a nose. Wow, that's really heavy duty plastic, that's nice. Uh, yeah, it's more wings and, and, and oh, we've got a center section here. It looks like we're going with the whole unified pods to a singular point in the middle. Um, so again, we really oh, don't know who the manufacturer is. Let's, let's see what this says. Uh, huh. Skyflight Hobbies Co. LTD. Okay, so not a Blitz RC Works plane directly. Who knows what the, sh you know, parent company garbage is. But, you know, as we're starting to identify brands and, and the quality levels associated with them, it's good for us to really be clear on this, um, just so you can manage your expectations, uh, let alone us. All right, why don't we start pulling stuff out? First things first is I've got a part bag, and it is full of aluminum, right off the bat. Aluminum spars, we've got all sorts of detail pieces, giant <laughs> machine guns, look at the size of those. All right, so diving deeper, uh, let's go ahead and pull out what looks to be our first engine pod, may sell. Uh, boy, good looking paint job at glance. Let's go ahead and pull this one out of its bag, get a closer look. Uh, looks like we've got servos mounted right here on both sides. Uh, well, they're actually really nicely bundled up inside. Um, I'll have to get a, a better picture of this, but they're they're actually twisted and, 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 and bound up together really nice. Um, looks like we've got a little detail piece here. 
So this is the tail. That's what this is. That means the fuselage is a two-parter. Looks like we got a little piece to hide our screws and mounting in there. That's kind of a nice little detail. Okay, so tail. Uh, what else have we got? Meaningless packaging materials. All right, looks like we've got a, oh, it's a tail. That's what this is, all right. Wow, just at a glance, beautiful looking uh, tail. We've got our glass for our gunner. Uh, yeah, and again, we've got nicely tied up and bound up uh, wires. Looks like this is a Y harness. Uh, servos are pre-installed, horns are installed. Nice decorative uh, coverings. Uh, we do not have servo horns installed, however, on our control surfaces. So that's uh, just an FYI there. All right, let's keep going here. So here's that nose, it's kind of laying in there. It's not the, the strongest plastic, but it is better than most that we've seen. I, I will say, just at a glance, I am already disappointed with the fact that I have a blow through uh, on the, the um, casting that was done on this, on the vacuum forming where it got too hot and it blew through and I have a big hole in my glass here. That's uh, something that should never have been allowed to ship. That's unacceptable, but uh, granted, I've reached a point where price, value, what am I getting? I'm gonna be pretty harsh if things like this aren't out of place or in place because this is a premium plane at a premium price. What else have we got? <clears throat> Giant center section to our wing. This thing is, is huge. Looks like it's got everything mounted in it already. We've got landing gears. We've got, oh boy, something magical holding it in. There it is. Oh, I see. They've got these little pieces of foam on the side holding down the wing tip. All right. There it comes up. Boy, this is a huge component. This is a big plane. I thought the, uh, the mule we just did was a big plane. This thing's gonna be gigantic. All right, looks like we've got uh, an angry servo out of the box, that's easy to fix. All of our wires, looks like we have a BEC. Oh, no motors mounted. I wonder where the motors are. We'll have to hunt for those. Huge piece though, good grief. Look at how big that is. Flaps are installed. Yeah. Foam looks nice, I don't see any damage, any blemishing. Okay, happy with what I see so far. I'm gonna just have to pile things up for a second. Last thing we've got in this box is our tail section. Now, <laughs> the graphics luckily are pretty good on this. Um, actually, they're very good. Uh, the reason that I, I hesitated there is uh, we just did a review of the uh, Blitz RC Works um, California Cutie. It had the worst graphics we've ever seen on any airplane, ever. Uh, honestly, I would have rather, you know, no graphics on it whatsoever so I could go to Cali Graphics, buy the kit I, or, or, or set that I want and, and apply it. So I'm kind of ho-hum that these are already on here because it makes it harder for me to do that, if not removes my ability to do that. However, the graphics are so good, hey, I don't feel like I'm, I'm being screwed over. So, all right, I, I, I'll, I'll suck it up on this one. Um, seeing that I, I saw the plane long before I bought it online, I knew what I was getting, so I'm okay with it. All right, giant piece of foam aside. All right, let's, uh, let's see what else we've got here. And just make some more room. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna dive in on these cows. These things are massive. Um, I've got the Hobby King uh, B17, and it has decent sized cowls. It's not bad, but by no means can I, can I make a fist and fit it inside with room to spare. These things are massive. Look at the size of that. 
<laughs> That's pretty cool. That's good looking. All right, let's keep going here. We'll uh, work on the next one. Boy, tape all over the place. Tape, tape, tape. Got our second cowl. And we've got very just overkill tape. Oh my gosh. We've got a, a gun here. Looks like it's our top gun. There we go. We'll just leave all that garbage in there. And boy, big, beautiful machine guns. Um, it looks like this is some sort of snap type uh, locking cover. Uh, immediately, the first thing I want to do is I want to make this thing rotate, throw a servo on it, and the camera up in it. But uh, um, we'll have to see how that works out. Beautiful, beautiful detail on it. I mean, the rivets are great. Nice hard cast plastic. It's a good piece. That's a good piece. All right, <clears throat> diving in further, we've got what appears to be some bombs and LEDs. Hopefully that means we have LEDs in our wingtips already. If not, that is a detail we will have to add. Begrudgingly. I say begrudgingly because, again, at this price point, they should be installed. Without question. All right. So we've got our wing tips. So this is the second half of our, our wing. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna pop one of these open just so we can get a good close look. First impressions. I'm gonna try my hardest if I can get through all the tape. My gosh. <laughs> I can't believe how much tape they've used. Now everything's sticking together. All right. So let's take a look at that wing. Well, right off the bat, super happy to see all metal mechanical hinges. Um, Silvers are installed. We've got nice plastic covers on those. Uh, you know, looking really nice. Looks like we've got our second portion of our flaps that carries through. Um, and we have some LEDs installed. Do we? Indeed we do. <laughs> Indeed we do. Um, so we got our, our, our tip lights on our, on our, jeez, uh, ring tip. So the headlights are great. I love headlights. The more detail, the better. But they installed the cover for this upside down. There's a diffuser tube that's supposed to go over the LED and it's nowhere near it. So the LED is just shining out the front, the light's not being diffused, and you lose half the effect of the, the headlight. So that's absolutely a lazy mistake. My book, that's unacceptable. Again, at this price point. Um, is it a hard fix? Well, uh, that's glued on there pretty good. So I think I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Bummer. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's... Uh, Let's keep going. And I hate to say it, but seeing little things like that, normally I wouldn't open up the other wing. You know, save the bag and we just jump to the time-lapse build here. Now I have to look at this one and I have the same problem on this one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, looks like our servo's jacked all the way forward here. There we go. We'll just gently move that back. Uh, beautiful mechanical hinges. Uh, they're all nice, tight, secure. We've got our servo horns already installed. Um, looks like we've got a spar that'll eventually go through, some sort of a peg system. Uh, the foam's great, good paint, good color. So, it's just the little details, but <laughs> you know, again, that's what you're paying for with this plane. A super plane should have super details. Uh, looks like we've got a decal pack, yep decals for sure. So these are big props. I actually do not recall off the top of my head how big these are. Um, so the big question is, is how proprietary are they? Or are they? So we're going to take one of these out and get a good look at it. Um, so yeah, they're, they're pretty proprietary. It looks like they've got an insert for a nut and uh, boy the the graphics on it look nice. 
Yeah, they really do. Uh, beautiful heavy duty prop, boy, good. That's uh, fiber impregnated nylon. That's gonna be robust. So yeah, nice props actually. Pretty cool. All right, so I think the last thing we've got here is a fuselage. There we go. All right, let's take this guy. Set it aside. Boy, that is a huge plane. Wow, gigantic plane. <laughs> so we got Bombay, Bombay doors already falling open. Um, so some sort of servos are going to have to worry about being hooked up there. Uh, it looks like we've got our landing gear covers uh, in place. Uh, these are spring-loaded. Wow, heavy-duty aluminum giant gear. That's uh, that's nice to see. Good quality. First chance I've had a, a, to see a glance of one of these. Um, graphics are okay. They're not tremendous, but they're they're okay. Um, looks like we've got uh, battery cover here. Detailed cockpit. Now that's that's fun. That's actually way fun. Um, this will be fun to go in and hand paint the details in. Um, there's a lot in there detail wise. So that's that's a good time. Um, looks like we've got our nose glazing that will go over this. All right. Well, I hate to say it, but uh, now it's all all but for the uh, the hard work putting this thing together. Hard work. It's always a, a lot of fun doing these builds. Okay, well, uh, boy, I got a pile of foam here. This is probably the fullest this table's ever been. I guess we jump to the time lapse. Let's get to building and uh, we'll see what this looks like. Come up with some opinions while we build it.
have it. This thing is absolutely massive. Uh, build is finished. Um, yeah, there were some hiccups. There were some good, some bad, some some uh, some sins that we're going to talk about. But uh, overall, wow, what an impressive plane! I got to be honest, this thing's so big, it was really hard to work with on the bench. So if that's the case, I'm kind of terrified about our thrust check here. I have not ramped this thing up yet. I uh, guess we're going to find out together what happens. Um, fortunately, this thing's so big, I can hold on to just about anywhere on this thing. Um, tell you what, where's that front wheel? There we go. Okay. All right. Here we go. Maiden thrust check. So that was really deceiving for me. I, these are low KV, low RPM motors <laughs> and giant props. So they're not hitting the same RPM that we see on other planes that makes us go ooh ah. The part for me actually that was, was surprising is I had to hold on to the plane, like legitimately hold on to the plane. It was tractoring itself forward. <laughs> this thing has a lot of pull. I'm, I'm gonna give that one more shot. You know, I'm half tempted here. I wonder, is there anywhere I can attach this scale just quickly? Tell you what, give me three seconds. Let me see if I can come up with something here. Gotta have something. All right, sorry for the delay. I actually wanna see how much power this has. So I've got a scale and a little uh, super strong packing tape harness. And I want to see how much pull this had because that surprised me. All right, take a little harness here. We will wrap it around the hook. All right. Holy cow! Wow! 128 ounces of pull. 128 ounces. Well, that was worth doing the quick test while we made a mess. <laughs> well, the plan is definitely exciting. I'll say that much. By the same token, is, is is you know we've got all this power. It's heavy. Oh my gosh, this we got a lot of angry servos here. This plane is heavy, heavy, heavy. I I seriously struggled to move it around the bench, flipping it over, working on various parts. Um, and its wingspan was so big that as I'm doing that, I'm you know hitting microphones and lighting and airplanes and everything else from the ceiling. Uh, let's dive into some of the details that that uh, we kind of saw on this plane. So, boy, where to start? There's so much. I'm gonna start with one of the coolest bits, the landing gears. The gears on this plane, they're fantastic. Um, all aluminum, all aluminum body, shock absorbing, dampening, um, you know, the, the closing hatch doors, both after landing and takeoff is really cool, or should I say, extending the gear and closing the gear. Um, really, really great details on that. Um, you know, they actuate really slowly, really smoothly, very scale, and I'm very impressed with just overall how they're designed. Attached to those are, oh, wow, one of the coolest things I've seen in a while, brakes, like legitimate brakes. So I've got this set up on my, uh, what do I got here, my R knob uh, on my, my Spectrum 8 channel, and we have free flowing motion here. And as I increase the knob, we get more and more braking power. Now it's interesting, at some point though, in the braking process, um, we'll see often weird things with this plane. For instance, um, the lights will kill out. Um, and so it makes me worry we're drawing a lot of current there, maybe even brown out a radio on a landing. We're just gonna have to experiment with that and see, but what a cool feature. 
Um, yeah, moving on uh, from that. Holy cow, how do you beat that? Well, you know, the flaps and the ailerons on this actually are really great. The wings came pre-assembled from the factory, all of our uh, clevises, all of our horns installed. I was really happy about that. With regard to the wings, there are missed opportunities. So for instance, we have a diffuser here on this, uh, this light that's not lined up with the LED. Uh, it's, you know, roughly about four or five millimeters below where the diffuser is. And so these are never really gonna pop the way they're supposed to. Um, the flaps on this are great. I haven't gone through and, and slowed them down here, set a travel rate, but really, really great. Um, I do have one rod that is really loose and I worry about flutter as we fly with these. We're just going to have to try them out. We're going to have to see how they perform. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet how I would make them more rigid other than honestly just increasing the, the uh, thickness of the, the control horn, horns that have been used or the control arms that have been used, um, which is a really, really easy upgrade to do with this plane. Um, ailerons are, are absolutely fantastic, you know, beautiful detail on these, a little bit of ribbing in there. Um, boy, we got some talky servos in the uh, landing gears, kind of an interesting thing. Uh, elevator, same thing, great detail, good control, uh, and rudder control. Now, this is where I talk about sins. So, the plane came with all of the servo horns and clevises installed except for the tail. So we have our two rudders and we have two separate aileron surfaces. So four servos are chilling back here. Um, so we went ahead and connected all those, but what we found is the clevises that this plane came with are not flyworthy, period. Absolutely not. All right. It's not a huge thing. We go down to our local hobby store, we spend, you know, a, a buck twenty-five, we buy a new thing of clevises, we come back, we put them in, we have something that's solid. It's a $550 plane, normally $800. That's flat out unacceptable. Even if I had taken some fuel line, cut it, and put it on there just as a little piece of security to keep the clevis closed, the problem is these clevises, they're made with such a soft, flexible, bendy plastic that the pin that's in it just literally pops out. I mean, if you, if you even resist it, it will pop out on its own. So it's just not gonna work. Uh, big sin, big sin on this plane. That is really truthfully in my book, unacceptable. Um, in the time lapse, if you pay attention, you'll see that I had one heck of a fight with one of our wings. The reason for that is because they had uh, inserted in, in both the center and the outer wing part um, aluminum rods, spars, two of them, super, you know, bomber proof. I mean, super strong. You throw your aluminum spar in that connects to that, you have a solid aluminum, you know, uh, jo joint between these. The, the problem though was is, on one wing, those aluminum tubes were completely filled with foam, completely cast all the way down the uh, the, down the plane. Yeah, so so we end up taking and having a a um, spar that will not allow, uh, or or, or a, a internal spar in the wing that won't allow for the rod that connects the two wings to go into that wing because it's completely filled with foam. So then I had to go and find screwdrivers and I'm jabbing holes in there and I'm trying to use drill bits. It just turned into a fiasco and took way more time than I honestly should have spent on it. The other wing went on flawlessly. It was a five second install, but oh man, this sucker just fought and fought and fought me. Honestly, it, it detracted from the plane overall for me. It was a negative. It, it, it was a bad experience point. Again, on what normally, when it's not on sale, is an $800 plane. I just, I can't be okay with that. That's Other problems that I had, uh, we, we didn't receive any of the screws that actually holds on our, our um, glass glazing there, or plastic glazing on the nose. We ended up having to scrounge around and luckily I found some old hinges that had screws that were of a similar type that worked well. Um, other things that we run into, this, cast plastic um, 
battery hatch slash cockpit, it, 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 it just doesn't fit the plane, um, size-wise and dimensions-wise. Um, it's a little wider, it hangs over the edges. The magnets do not connect with and seat with the other magnets. Um, turning the plane over, I had a battery that I had uh, installed. And immediately the battery and, uh, and cockpit self-ejected. So, all right, it's a Mitchell inverted flight, eh, maybe. But that's a, a big glaring no. And again, on a plane of this price point, when we can go to something from E-Flight, take you know the, the, the Cherokee as an example, and at a $200 price point, we have a locking latch mechanism that prevents this from popping off. Um, on a $200 plane, we get that. We don't get that here. That's really, really disappointing. Um, the guns and the details overall were, were great. All the glue on plastic pieces, antennas, um, all of the different little pieces of, of detail really make this plane jump to life. All right, all of that aside, <clears throat> it's a good plane, it's exciting, it's big, it's garish, it's gonna look amazing from the ceiling. I hate to say it, it's funny I say that, but this is the kind of plane that I think would look absolutely killer in a restaurant hanging from the ceiling as part of the decor, right? And a designer would come in and pay, you know, two grand for it, not realizing what they're buying because they don't care, it'll never fly. We fly these planes. We, because we fly these planes, we need to see that there's a certain amount of, of quality control and quality in the planes. And so that's why we point out these problems, is that way you know what you're getting into buying this plane. Hey, I gotta be honest, again, you know, it's a big investment. This one's an expensive plane. This is probably the most expensive plane we've reviewed yet. Um, you know, you don't want to find yourself feeling buyer's remorse or feeling disappointed at the end of the day when you've bought your plane. Um, but uh, this is the uh, Super Mitchell. We can stick with that from Banana Hobbies. And, uh, you know, our, uh, our opinions on it. You know, feel free to, to chime in on this conversation. Um, we'd like to know what you guys think about this, questions you have. Uh, you know, we'd love to revisit these and do follow-ups with them, not only just the maiden flights, but also, hey, you know, let's talk about some of the problems we have with the planes and some of the ideas people have to make them better. I'd love to see that. Feel free to share that below. So until next time, Mitchell's going to go in the air on its maiden. We'll just keep flying.